Rick Grinnell was acting director of national intelligence under former President Trump, and he joins me now. Rick, good to see you. Um, the, the IRS whistleblower says that the investigation into Hunter was obstructed by the DOJ, even under Bill Barr. They wouldn't let his team look into anything leading to potentially Joe Biden, foreign influence peddling, before or even after the election. Now they want to throw Trump in prison for classified documents at the same time. They couldn't make it any clearer. Yeah, look, uh, we've got on our hands a legal issue and a PR issue. And I think that the Jack Smith team has admitted by leaking this audio tape to CNN, they've admitted that this is part of their PR strategy because it's clearly not being saved for the legal strategy. And, and I think that um, if you look at the whistleblower, the whistleblower to me is, inc is, is very credible. And here's why. The whistleblower waited until the process was finished, until Hunter Biden was actually uh, announced that, that the end of the justice system was done because there was a plea bargain, right? Yeah. He waited. He didn't go and try to uh, go public and, and mess up the investigation. He followed the process. That's not what's happening with Jack Smith's group. Jack Smith's group constantly leaks to CNN. Uh, you know, Rob, I've said it before, uh, when I was testifying in front of the grand jury, Jack Smith's grand jury, right. I didn't even get out of the building before there was a CNN.com story, literally reciting everything that the prosecutors ask, asking, asked of me, including specific documents that they asked me about were already in CNN. Uh, it, it's really outrageous, but it go, just goes to show that this is the rule of D.C., not the rule of law. Yeah, I, I want to ask you this. You, you were DNI under Trump. How hard would it be to determine whether or not Joe Biden was at his home with his son the night that that text message was sent to the Chinese Communist Party official back in 2017? I can't imagine with Secret Service that would be very hard to figure out at all. Well, they know. They already know. They know exactly where he was. Um, either someone's not caring to look and to figure out uh, what the facts are, or they know and they're just hiding it. But there's no question between uh, Secret Service and, you know, mobile phone pinging. Um, th they know exactly if Joe Biden was there. Now, now look, President Biden keeps saying, I didn't discuss this with, with Hunter. And Hunter keeps saying, I did discuss this with my dad. At least he's saying that in the text messages. And he's telling people that. And so this is a this is an incredible problem because it's it points to the fact that the Biden family is selling access to Joe Biden. And I don't think that it matters whether Joe Biden got money or not. To me, selling access is the outrage. And Washington, D.C., and the press corps and all of the political operatives there should be outraged that this is happening in our country. Yeah. The problem is, is that so many people in that city are so used to corruption yeah. that it's not bothering them. Yeah, I don't. I I think you're you're, you're very easy on it. I, I'd say Joe Biden is selling access to Joe Biden. He's using his brother and his son uh, to get the job done. I mean, it, it seems fairly obvious. You've got Hunter complaining in the text message that's been verified from the laptop, verified by Apple that it, he says I've, I've got to give Dad half of my money. What fifty-year-old man has to give their father half of his money? Why do you have to give your dad half the money? Well, obviously, Dad, Dad's the ringleader of this thing. He's 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 taken from you, and you're complaining about it. But, but he's at the top of the whole thing. It's, it's, it's very obvious what they're doing. And you can't look at all this evidence and not, it, it smacks you right in the face. It's so obvious. I want to get into one final thing before I let you go. The, the document that Trump was allegedly discussing with the reporters at Bedminster that's on that leaked audio, uh, the document that has not been found, maybe it doesn't even exist, we don't know. Um, that recording, it came from July 2021. In that same month was this piece from The New Yorker about how Mark Milley stopped Donald Trump from attacking Iran in the last days of his presidency. It was uh, this, this great puff piece on Milley made him look like such a hero. I know you testified in front of a grand jury. You're, you're limited to what you can say. But, but there's another potentially really big story here because Trump was so beloved for one of the reasons was because he wasn't a warmonger. And he stood up to this machine that always has us at war, killing our kids so that a lot of people can make a lot of money uh, in, in the D.C. area. Trump says that Milley and the Defense Department are the ones that really wanted to bomb Iran. 
And now Millie tried to flip it, it appears, and is trying to make it look like, you know, as the warmonger that he is, he's trying to make it look like he's the hero. He stopped Trump from bombing Iran during the transition to create some kind of diversion to stay in power. What can you tell us about that? Look, this is, this is a very long conversation. I don't even know where to begin, but you hit it on the head here. This article in The New Yorker was written by Susan Glasser. And let me just tell you that she is always the one that the Democrats go to to cover up their tracks. Uh, Victoria Newland on the whole steel dossier. Go look up that piece that Susan Glasser tried to cover up for Victoria Newland. But there's no question that Milley um, was doing something on his own. And now he's trying to beat his chest with reporters going to the typical Democrat reporter and saying, you know, oh, I stopped Trump. Look, if there were plans for a war, it wasn't coming from Donald Trump. Donald Trump was pretty clear that we didn't want any wars, that we wanted tough diplomacy. It's the Democrats that were mocking the tough diplomats, mocking the tough diplomacy as saying, oh, we're isolated because people are upset when we put sanctions on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, that the Democrats took off the, those sanctions. I have a whole list of things that show the weakness of the Democrats. I'll finish with this, Rob. The opposite of America first, is consensus with the Europeans. And Mark Milley was clearly trying to please the Europeans with, I stopped Donald Trump uh, from starting a war. And it's just not true. Didn't make any sense. Didn't make any sense at the time. Didn't match the way he ran the country for four years. This certainly makes a lot more sense as an explanation. Rick, always good to see you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Rob.